Well, it's a fascinating topic. It's got a lot of people talking, and I'm sure you've heard of that term, intermittent fasting, but what does that exactly mean? I am joined by Dr. Zach Levine, an ER physician at the MUHC. Welcome back to the show. It's great Thanks to have you here. Good so uh, describe, what, what is intermittent fasting exactly? So it is as it suggests, right? It's, it's fasting intermittently. Right. So, but basically, there are different ways to do it, but basically you're giving your body uh, at least, say, 16 hours a day when it's not taking in any food. So basically okay. your insulin levels are not going up and you're not, uh, you know, you're not taking in as much glucose or whatever. So, and the thought is that in doing that, there's a lot of benefits and it gives your body also a chance to use up the fat. Right. Um, and so, and one of the benefits, one of the potential benefits they feel is that as opposed to when you're on a very low calorie diet, your body kind of down regulates the metabolism. So okay. you don't use as many calories because right. your body's like, whoa, I'm not getting enough. I'm going to slow down my metabolism. And then you stop, lo stop losing weight. But this, the thought is that it may uh, kind of trick the body because you never go into that lower metabolism state and you actually continue your high metabolism. But during the times when you're okay. not eating, which is at least a good 16 hours a day, then your body keeps uh, keeps burning up the calories. Are, are there different types of schedules yeah, and exactly. patterns during exactly. intermittent so fasting? Some people, do, some people do full 24 hours fasting. Most people do a couple of days a week, but we were talking some people do more if, yeah. they, can, if they can do it healthily. Of course. Um, and some people do a couple of days a week where they'll have low cal, like, like we're talking like 25% of the calories of normal, like 500 calories a day. But the most, definitely the most popular and the most maybe sustainable for a lot of people is this 16-8, which is basically you, you choose eight hours uh, a day when you eat and, okay. then, and the rest of the time you're sort of fasting but you know of course eight hours of that you're probably sleeping hopefully eight hours yeah. maybe nine hours <laughs> um, um, but that gives your body a chance to not not be having food uh, not taking in food all the time and that's the most popular and one of the okay. recommendations is it you have to do what works for you uh, when they've done studies it looks like maybe doing it earlier in the day is better than later in the day so uh, the whatever noon to 8 p.m. may not be as good as 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. but some, oh, okay. for some people it's not sustainable so why are people doing it what's the reason behind it the majority definitely is for weight loss there's okay. no question I mean that motivates a lot of people yeah. and a lot of people can't or have difficulty staying on a low calorie diet because those work by the way in terms of effectiveness a uh, low cal diet definitely works and in terms of a lot of the benefits one of the benefits people see, so weight loss is definitely one of them, right. but another one that people see is insulin resistance, decreased insulin resistance, right? So what does that mean exactly? So basically we have insulin, well the problem in diabetes is either you don't have insulin, so you can't use the glucose that you take in, Okay. or that's type 1. Type 2 is you have insulin but you're not, you're not sensitive to it, so even though you have the glucose in your bloodstream and you have insulin, your cells can't use the insulin to to take in and use the glucose so because you're resistant to it right and one of the things uh, one of the concerns is that because most of us including me we have too much glucose all the time that the body is just so used to having so much insulin around it's just resistant to it, it doesn't work okay so one of the thoughts behind this is that your insulin your insulin levels are low for 16 hours a day or more depending on what you do and so you become more sensitive to it and it's been shown to be potentially helpful in so people. It, does that is, are you in sort of a pre-diabetic stage is potentially that, that's the okay. concern you know right. I, I don't know that the evidence that that there's great evidence, but the concern is that by eating sugar all the time, by having high insulin levels all the time, number one, you gain weight because insulin helps you absorb the sugar and store it as fat if you don't use the glucose. Right. But the other thing is that you could potentially become diabetic because type 2 diabetes is essentially insulin resistance. You have, right. you have this insulin, but you're not sensitive to it. So these diets have been purported as a potential um, help for pre-diabetic people to not become diabetic. I want to get into the dangers. Like who shouldn't be on this, this intermittent fasting? Who yeah. should stay away from it? So certainly people with certainly people with eating disorders. Okay. You know, so yeah, one of, of the concerns is even for people, even for people, normal people, whatever people without eating disorders, is that you'll binge during that eight hours, right? And okay. That's, so it's sort of like uh, you know binging and purging sort of thing, which is a problem for in bulimia and types of anorexia. So if you have an eating disorder, stay away and okay. or talk to your doctor for sure if you've had a history of it. Children definitely shouldn't be using it. Uh, you know, people who are pregnant or, or who are breastfeeding shouldn't use it. Okay. Uh, diabetics pr shouldn't use it or at least definitely talk to their physicians about it because it is, it is potentially jarring and in some people it's not healthy either. In some people they need that constant influx of uh, nutrients. Is that sustainable for say an athlete? Uh, do you see, uh, do, so that's, can athletes It's do? a potential concern and you're right, that's, that's a great point. Athletes should definitely talk to their doctor, right. ideally like a sports medicine physician about what's the best because you need the fuel, right? right. It's not healthy necessary. You're not going to run a marathon or even half a marathon and have no fuel and you'll, you'll become uh, hypoglycemic, you'll drop your blood pressure, right. you'll, you know, you potentially pass out and so and yeah, that's, that's a potential 
risk. As usual, you sent us tons of information it's on this, of, which yeah. we're so thankful all the time. So we really appreciate for yeah. you taking the time. So if you visit our blog session, uh, section over at btmontreal.ca, we'll have all the information there. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank Always you. a pleasure having you. We'll be back with more Breakfast Television right here on City TV.